Essendon's second greatest winning margin ever against anyone in their 117 year history. Say the bomb is fly up, up. They are the team that are fair. They are trying their best, but they can't get in. As the bomb is fly up, hey. Wait up. We um, ask the question at the start of the game about how we mature. Can we play the same way against different types of opposition, the way we want to play, no matter what the situation? Okay? Against Adelaide, you're playing against a really tough team. If things weren't going your way, you're up. The way we want them to, we played the right way. Tonight, when the game was easier than we may have expected, you still played the same way. The last five minutes wasn't the way we wanted to play, but I'll forgive you for that because we had probably even your car from that. <laughs> <laughs> Their balls are steel. <laughs> they, uh, they're still great. The cramping going on, shoot, we left still on the bench. So there was a reason for that. Look, terrific win. But the way we handle it and go into next week, next week is going to be one of the toughest games we play for the year. They are as good as anyone in the competition at the moment, aren't they? Yeah. The defensive pressure, the way we play. It's the way you prepare yourself right now. Pat yourselves on the back. Well done. Great victory. But let's get ready for free. They're the ones we're after. We're going to be on our toes and can play our best football and confront some of the best defensive pressure in the competition. Do you know who's also very good at that? Yes. Us. We play the right way to go out of three on take the points home. Well done. Recover well. This is the crow in the team. The challenge for us was to come out prepared and ready to play um, a Melbourne outfit that we're going to come out hard. So we did that and we got away with the win, which was good. It's a big prep for us next week. We've got per, uh, Frio in Perth on a Friday night, so we've got the short turnaround, so it's important now that um, we get the recovery right. And uh, They're going to be... Uh, well, they've shown that they're a strong outfit this year and they're playing great footy, so it's going to be um, tight in the contest next week and we've got to be ready for uh, a more physical game, I guess. I think they're really important having, having that close relationship with your family, um, particularly when things aren't going the way you'd want. Um, you've got someone there to talk to um, and a shoulder to lean on, I guess. But in saying that, that's the beauty about playing football. There's always heaps of people that you can talk to and, and get advice from. And It can be a long season and sometimes it doesn't, doesn't always turn out the way you want it and sometimes you have really good weeks. Yeah, last year probably wasn't um, the year that I wanted or expected. I started okay, there's a few games there where I thought I could have built on and, and really had some really good games, but um, yeah, it probably wasn't how I'd planned and uh, obviously with the, the size performance in the second half of the year, how we sort of went down, downwards on the ladder a little bit, um, yeah, I probably went that way as well. Forward it goes for Melson, duck the head, and he is gone, has to be gone. It just didn't work for me. I think I, I'd put in all the work, but uh, I was probably a bit of soul searching there for a while, wondering what, what was going wrong and how we could um, get me playing my best footy. Um, and yeah, I know that I'm a lot better than, than what I can dish up sometimes, and I know what I could do if I, um, if I, if I really put myself to, um, up to it. So I think um, it's more so myself. I know that I'm a better player than what I display sometimes and it's just frustrating for myself and I get myself down on that. Ready, go. Whoa! <laughs> that was a big one. I've recently moved back home, so um, yeah, it's been good. I've got um, two brothers that live with me and, and a little sister and my other brother lives with my dad um, up on the Murray, so yeah, I've got a few siblings and um, yeah, my family's been great. Um, you know, ever, ever since I've started my career. Yeah, Mitch is a pretty good athlete. Um, yeah, he'll, he'll have a crack in the next couple of years at trying to play some footy as well. Um, he's probably the same size as me now, so he'll be, he'll be a big boy once he grows up, which, um, which should help him. Here you go. Yeah, Kobe comes to pretty much every game. Oh, what do you call that one? The side throw. Oh, the side throw. 
Um, he loves coming to watch all the boys. He thinks that they're all his mates. Um, he comes in the rooms after the games and might one day play a little bit of footy. It's good to come home, have a muck around with them in the backyard and kick the footy, shoot some hoops and stuff like that. So it's a good balance. Um, keeps me grounded and yeah, it's, it's how I like it. I'm over, I'm over this basketball business. For myself, I think a release outside of footy um, is really beneficial and I think a lot of the boys would vouch for that. Um, it just takes your mind off things, you know, we, we come into the club five or six days a week and, you know, it's, it's pretty much a full day every day, um, particularly in the pre-season. So to take your mind away from footy and, and have an interest outside of footy, particularly when things aren't going well, Since I've been in the club, I've managed to um, have a, a good relationship with Ron Kern, one of the, the Coterie group members of the club. So he, uh, he gave me a text message. Um, it was late one night, it was 11 p.m. I remember, and I looked at my phone, I was wondering why he was texting me. And he said um, that they had a horse and they put a few names in a hat and, and my, name, my last name was pulled out. So um, Lady Malksham was the name of the horse and because she's a filly, um, obviously they've, they've chucked the lady at the front of it. So um, yeah, Ronnie jokes that it wasn't named after me, it was named after my mum. So it's good to go and uh, watch it every now and then and it's, it's actually a good horse, wins a few races. Racing, dream face brilliantly away on the inside. Lady Melksham, she's jumped reasonably about the middle of the pack and Carry to Fortune presses on the rail and Lady Melksham's run up behind them. It's Dreamface, Lativa, Chinzia, Lady Melksham. She's getting the last run at them. She's getting the split, Lady Melksham. Chinzia, Dreamface, Lady Melksham. She's coming home the middle, Lady Melksham. In a driving finish, I think she wins a nose from Chinzia. Dreamface a length away, third, Lativa weakened out four. Won't be beat next week. Won't be beat. Won't be beat. That's a good sign. Yeah. Feeling good. Good run. Well done. She's looking good after her session this morning, so the, uh, the trainers and, and owners are all pretty happy with how she's going. Yeah, chance she might race against uh, Black Caviar in a couple of weeks. Um, I probably won't be backing her that day, but uh, yeah, it'd be good to, for her to race against such a, um, an amazing horse and get the experience over there in a Group 1 race, so that'd be good. Lady Melton was supposed to be a bit of uh, off-season entertainment or enjoyment for all the members and the partners. Um, what has ended up a real romantic story is that uh, Lady Melcham now has won five of the first eight races. I think uh, Jake's really enjoying uh, the fact that she's been named uh, after him. Jake's a, a, a terrific young man and um, we've got a great relationship with him and uh, uh, we enjoy his company on and off the field uh, and it's allowed us to get to know the players a little bit more uh, outside their football careers. Yeah, it's good to get to know the Essendonians through, through the horse and obviously there's a lot of um, dinners and functions that they come along to and they've got a good relationship with the players where they help us out um, with our off-field um, interests such as you know education or if we need a little bit of work experience in any area, they're, they're there to help us which is really good for the players to, um, you know, for when they finish footy to, to make something of themselves. Yeah, as a current player, it's always good to uh, to get involved with past players of the club. Harold Lambert uh, used to wear the number 17, the number that I wear. He's getting a tour of the facilities uh, this week. It's a good number. <laughs> Not too heavy on the back, are you? <laughs> when I was in the army for four and a half years, and when I come back, they give me number five. I couldn't get number 17, so I had to wait two years before I could get it back. I didn't have much luck with five. I've got a lot of injuries. It was five, yeah. <laughs> They all got back to the old numbers, better off. Yeah. I reckon the good players in our day, even though they only trained two days a week, would have been able to cope with this, with, with, with the way the game's played now, certainly with these playing facilities. Most of the past players that you meet were champions of the club, so they know what they're talking about. 
um, just because they didn't play in, in the modern game uh, today, you know, they still have wise words to pass on. Good to see you, mate. I'm going to go do some recovery. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you during the year. Callum. Yeah. yeah, the fans are really good. Um, I think myself and the boys get a lot of interaction through Twitter and um, Instagram, social media websites and stuff like that. So it's good to connect with them, making sure that they, you know, they get a bit of uh, interaction through us as players. The other the other day when we had the shark dive, there was a couple of supporters that won on an auction uh, to come and dive with us. So um, it's good to just give them that little bit of reassurance, especially at the moment with all the things that have gone down, you know, they want to know what's going on in the club and if the players are alright and stuff like that, so um, it's good to just reassure them that everything's going to be okay. supporters they encouraging when you're playing well and when you're not playing well and um, yeah it's great to have them there and, and we love it when they get behind us and um, support us and encourage us. Yeah once you start to approach the ground um, I think the first the first sort of sign that you get when you when you're on your way to the game is when you see all the cars banked up going over the Yarra River with all their scarfs and whatnot hanging out of the car. Um, you see everyone walking to the game and um, over the bridge and stuff like that and that's when you start to um, switch on a little bit and get ready to get into game mode. How you going? Howdy. We've just got a great supporter base that come out to our games every week. Even last year when we had that um, second half of the year where we didn't didn't go to plan, um, yeah, it's just good to have them there. Opportunity, Melksham again, little handball out the side, Stanton gets good purchase, he kicks the goal, five in a row for the Bombers. Um, it's good that we can repay the faith every time we have a good win. I haven't had an MRI scan on my knee before. Sometimes you might get a little bit nervous depending on the injury, but uh, hopefully today I'll be right and I think I'm pretty confident I'll be all good. We know that it's going to be a physical uh, physical game against Frio. They, that's the way they play. And they've got talent spread all over the field. So have we. Perfect side for Cranberry's left. Off a couple of steps, just nurses it through. Bombers get their third of the quarter. I came off in the last last bit of the third quarter and uh, I was just getting a little bit of cramp and uh, I didn't know what, what was wrong at the time and I sat down and my knee uh, started to get a bit of fluid in it and, um, and I wasn't able to participate in the last quarter. Initially I wasn't sure what happened but uh, someone said that I, I did land on my knee in the game maybe in the second or third quarter and then it just took a while to puff up a little bit and um, that's I think that was the main reason why it, why it did get sore. I'm just at the uh, Amy Park getting a uh, scan on my knee and uh, hopefully I should be fine but uh, just precautionary and uh, we'll see how we go. Um, just to check, nothing's changed since last time? No, not at all. No pacemakers or anything like that? No. And which knee are we doing? No, left knee. Right, what do you do? Have a seat here. Thank you. And we'll take you around shortly. Cheers, mate. I haven't had an MRI scan on my knee before. Uh, I've had my hip and 
a few other parts, but never my knee. So sometimes you might get a little bit nervous depending on the injury, but uh, hopefully today I'll be right and I think I'm pretty confident I'll be all good. Nice and noisy. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Wish me luck, guys. <laughs> so, Stu's having the 15 minute scan. We do three views of the knee. So, Dr. Bruce Reed's asked for us to do the test because Stu was a bit sore on Saturday night. And he's had some tests done by Dr. Bruce Reed at um, the club since then, and they all came up normal. So, we're just doing the MRI now to just see what the inside of the knee looks like post match if he's got any damage in there that needs to be dealt with. So these are the three images that we acquire. Dr. Bruce Reed's asked for a fairly general exam on Stu as the tests were normal that he's done at the club. So after the scan, our doctors will have a look at the scans for him and I'll, they'll give Dr. Bruce Reed a call and let him know if there's anything that needs to be dealt with. And as a bomb supporter, I'm hoping everything's alright and that Stu can just head off for the rest of the day and enjoy the rest of his day. I'm alive. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, it was about 15 minutes in there. And now we're just waiting on uh, Bruce Reed to give me a call and give me the all clear. Yep, how you going, Bruce? Good, got, the res got your result. Yep. Uh, nothing serious whatsoever. Okay, all that's good. All of you are really good. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, mate. Nah, good news, thank you. Yeah, talk to you soon, Stu. See you, ready. Well, I've got the all clear and uh, going to be lining up for Frio game uh, Friday night, so I can't wait and uh, hope you guys tune in. Got a difficult angle. It's gone through for a goal, so the advantage will be paid. Rip a goal. I think the players will back up pretty well after the, uh, the Melbourne game. Well, it was a high-scoring game and a little bit up and down, I think uh, it wasn't that much physical pressure, so they should be okay. Uh, we know that it's going to be a physical, uh, physical game against Frio. They're, that's the way they play. We know that they're very, they're, they're, uh, defensively they try and um, put pressure on us. So when we get the ball, uh, we're going to be under a lot of pressure. We're going to have less time to get rid of it. We, we know all that stuff, so it's, it just depends on how we handle it. Yeah, I think it's really important to uh, shut the crowd down. It, certainly in a state, we try and encourage our boys to, to keep playing the game. They're very isolated, very lonely. Uh, you know, if the opposition get off to a good start, it puts a bit more pressure on us, so we don't. We want to avoid that situation. So, starting the game is really important for us. When James got to the club two years ago, uh, it was a real battle to win in the state. I think they have a belief now that they can win uh, against any team and um, anywhere. So, winning in the state's not a big uh, uh, fear for our players now. So, you'd have to go over. Our players would have to go over with a good chance. Good mark within his range. Well, they've obviously got some good young players. You know, Pav's always uh, been a good player over a long period of time. McFarlane's in good form. Uh, Hill and Fife are probably two of their really dangerous young players. So, uh, they've got talent spread all over the field. So have we. Comma, he'll be happy with his debut. Well, Nick Comma will be looking forward to going home and having a big game. The reason why we subbed him is he, he was a little bit uh, uh, worn out after his big effort in his first game. It was a massive day for, for him and his family and uh, you know so the idea was to freshen him up a little bit and uh, for this game because it's a big ground, he is home and uh, we'll give him a great opportunity to, to play. Every year is a different year. Obviously Fremantle's second half of last year was fantastic and they've started the season really well so it's a bit of a challenge um, but it's one we're ready for. We want to take it on and have a look at uh, see where we're at. Hey guys, welcome to Dyson's Diary. Uh, it's the night before we play Melbourne and um, just had a nice feed uh, with the housemates and uh, just getting ready to pack my bag. Usually always pack my bag the night before a game, so I'll just take you through what I usually throw in the bag. So uh, I've got a couple of pair of boots, um, the nice Adam Pures, ripping pair of boots. So uh, throw it in here. Um, got my towel after the game and shower. Uh, Lucky Jocks, the Calvin Clients, can't forget them, wear them every game. Um, water bottle, keep hydrated, and a banana, bit of energy food, nature's energy food, it's good stuff. And can't forget the, the player official pass, otherwise they won't let you in, so that gets you into the ground. Yep. Beauty, um, that's about it. And looking forward to the game tomorrow night, and uh, we'll see you next week. I think I was just more running around like a headless chook, you know, trying to get a touch, but. Um... You know, an exciting day to play against Carlton.
Saturday night at the MCG saw the launch of Visa's PayWave Wave and Win game, which gave one lucky fan the chance to win up to $3,000. For your chance to be the next winner, look out for the Visa PayWave Wave and Win game at half time of the Anzac Day match in round five. Justin Fletcher's going to take the opening bounce for the Bombers up against the Blues veteran in Justin Madden. My debut against Carlton was, I suppose, the build-up for that week. I remember Sheeds ringing me up on the Thursday night saying, you know, you're going to be in for this week. And you know, such a big crowd, I think there was over 90,000 people there. And, you know, it's something you dream about as a kid. And obviously, um, you know, it happened. So I was, uh, I was wrapped. He's done well in the first couple of minutes, young Fletcher. He was the late inclusion. You know, I thought I'd start on the bench or maybe off half forward flank or half back flank, but he threw me in the ruck against Justin Madden, so it was quite an experience. And um, I remember getting a knockout against Justin Madden, but um, as in kicks and handballs, I sort of can't remember. I think I only had sort of about four or five kicks and a couple of handballs, so I think I was just more running around like headless chook, you know, trying to get a touch. But, um, you know, an exciting day to play against Carlton. The Carlton captain, and he has to score to win the game for the Blues. And he... It's out of bounds, it's a draw! Oh, no! You know, you lose a lot of that nervous energy before the game and, and for it to be so close, you know, for the whole, you know, what, 120 minutes was, um, was exciting. G'day Bomber fans, I'm Jason Ashby, number 14 for the Mighty Bombers, and this is Antler Out of the Bag. Today I'm pulling my old school footy jumper out of the bag. Why this jumper is so special to me is because I went to Kerry Grammar. Um, I played footy from year 7 to year 12 and um, in my year 12 final year five boys were drafted with the likes of Jack Viney, myself, Jackson McRae, Christian Jacks and also Nathan Horovat. Uh, we had a pretty close-knit team and you know we were pretty successful as well so that was a great team to be a part of. So that's Antler out of the bag for this week. Don't forget to visit the Essendon website to take part in the fan segment for your chance to win an Antler prize pack. I think it's great that Essendon have run this project in using Indigenous music um, in the game and representing the Indigenous players in the community. Strength is a really important part of AFL. We need to be strong over the ball, strong in the contest, change of direction, acceleration, jumping height. And so today we're going to follow three players of our midfield through the, the weight session. <laughs> 